Special edition of Secret Science. Secret bases are no secret any longer. Google Earth has revealed that every continent has many secret bases. But what exactly goes on in these secret bases? The answer is simple. Advanced technologies are being developed which are decades in advance of anything you can find in your local electronic store. The Pentagon and ruling elite families have always kept their new technologies utterly secret. And they have made profits from these new technologies, sometimes for 50 years or more before the public knew it even existed. But what about advanced technology, which has been kept secret, not just for decades, but for hundreds of years? My name is Chris Everard, and welcome to this special edition of Secret Science. Thousands of years ago, in ancient India, in old Peru, and in Egypt, solid rock was melted and shaped like a hot knife, cutting through butter. Ancient stonemasons had the power to turn solid rock into goo. The secret to this technology is not electricity, and it's not aliens, but it is the power of the sun. Ancient people worshipped the sun, not just because it was floating in the sky, but because solar energy was fueling the development of amazing civilizations in the ancient world. The pharaohs of Egypt, the stonemasons of Maharashtra, 
and the mysterious Inca and pre-Columbian Peruvian civilizations have left us a legacy of amazingly accurately cut stone. In Scotland and Ireland, we find old hill forts where the rocks have been melted together. In the Sahara Desert, we find in Libya thousands, if not millions, of shards of glass which date back to antiquity. It is very obvious that ancient man knew how to melt sand and melt granite. In India, stonemasons built fantastic forts and palaces by gouging and digging directly into the hard bedrock. Just by digging into granite, these enormous palaces and temples in India were built over just a few years. Some of that sculpture and some of that carving in India cannot be replicated to this day even using modern tools. A handful of non-academic researchers and authors have been unlocking the secrets of the pre-Inca, pre-Columbian society that understood how to make the surface of granite turn into a mush which was then sculpted and shaped using spatulas and knives. The official academic textbooks say that in ancient Egypt and ancient Peru there were no hardened modern steel tools. The only tools available were made from soft metals. The official Egyptology textbooks say that the Egyptian stonemasons only had round rocks which they pounded against other rocks to create all of these amazingly laser perfect artifacts which we find today in Egypt. But how did they create 90 degree perfect angles? Anyone that's visited any museum of Egyptian artifacts can see hieroglyphs cut into solid granite with laser accurate perfection. How can that be created using a round pounding rock? And in the streets of Cuzco, ancient walls were built where the edges of the rocks so perfectly meet you cannot put a needle between each block of stone. Out in the foothills of Peru, we also see giant outcrops of bedrock which have been sculpted to make it look as if that bedrock is made from individual blocks of stone. In long lost forgotten valleys in Peru, we discover apprentice stonemason yards where enormous boulders have been cut and sliced just as if a giant has come along with a knife and sculpted shapes from butter. Obviously, there was some kind of technology in the ancient world allowing these people to cut any shape they wanted from any type of rock. We see a graveyard in Egypt full of granite. 
In actual fact, we see sculpted objects that have been discarded simply because they had a small crack in the actual piece. It seemed that in the ancient world, sculpting solid granite was no problem. If they made a mistake, they just cut another piece of granite from the bedrock and just started again. Join me, Chris Everard, in this investigation into the independent authors and researchers who are proving academia wrong. Welcome to Secret Science and welcome to the secret of turning rock into goo. Welcome to Hawaii. Now there are many places on planet Earth that actually have live volcanoes. And often what happens is that the volcano leaks magma. Magma is molten rock. The reason the rock is hot is because it's come from deep inside the Earth. The deeper you go inside the crust of the Earth, the hotter it gets because the Earth as a molten core. And these lava flows really create big problems. They can burn entire forests, they can set off uh, wildfires, and this is a time lapse showing you how pervasive lava flows are. And this is a prehistoric phenomenon. Ancient man knew that rock could be a liquid because they saw lava flows. It's as simple as that. Ancient man was not an idiot. He could see that rock, if it was heated, could be turned into a goo that could then be molded if necessary. Algeria. This is the Tissi and Algier plain. It is now highly radioactive because the French government actually exploded one of the world's most uh, powerful atomic bombs here in the 1960s. All over the northern Sahara, in Algeria and Libya, we find shards of glass. Now this glass, literally millions of fragments of this glass are spread over an enormous area and we now believe that a meteorite or several large meteorites hit the sand of the northern Sahara. The meteorite was boiling hot and it turned sand into glass. Now this is one of the most longest inhabited spaces on the face of the planet. Northern Algeria and northern Libya had mushroom cults and honey cults living actually in the northern Saharan desert. And we have artifacts in various museums made from this Libyan desert glass. Ancient man knew that sand could be melted and that once sand was melted, it would turn into glass. Throughout the ages, meteorites were venerated as sacred objects 
by many ancient civilizations, and that includes the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. If you can imagine the spectacular landing of a meteorite that makes contact with the desert sand, maybe at night, you've got light, you've got sound, you've got a mysterious object coming from outer space. And for obvious reasons, the remnants of these incidents, the actual meteorite core, which lands on the surface of the planet, was kept by the brotherhoods as a sacred object of power. Now we know this because there is archaeological evidence from Native American tribes who venerated and worshipped fragments of a meteorite that was actually buried in a special tumulus mound at the Diablo Canyon in Arizona. And they buried this meteorite about 50,000 years ago. But what we also know is that in ancient Egypt there was brotherhoods who also venerated meteorites as objects of power and they actually had special caskets made from granite where they used to keep the meteors. So what we can say with absolute certainty is that ancient man knew that sand was transformed into glass with the heat of meteors. Mankind in the ancient world was using glass. He was actually using the Libyan desert glass for jewelry and for other uses. And very early on, I'm talking about 5,500 years ago or more, ancient Egyptians knew that if they took some sand they could boil the sand, they could turn it into a molten glass, and there are wooden statues inside museums in Egypt where the eyeballs of those wooden statues are made of glass. But they're not just haphazard globules of glass. They have been fashioned to resemble the exact dimensions of the human eye. In other words, ancient Egyptians thousands of years ago were actually making lenses out of sand. They actually had not only perfected the art of turning sand into glass, but they were also making lenses which they were putting into their statues. No less than 18 items of meteoric iron were found inside the tomb of Tutankhamun. In the 1800s, an Egyptologist called Franz von Lauf proposed that the first iron that was ever worked into tools, actually being made into implements, by the ancient Egyptians was iron that had been collected from meteorites. In actual fact, the Coptic word banipe, first component of that word is ba, and the Egyptologist Franz von Lauf thought that the ba meant iron. The second part of the word, nipe, meant heaven, and so therefore the word banipe meant heaven 
iron or the metal of heaven. And that can only mean one thing, meteoric iron. And it was used by the pharaohs. The pharaohs, remember, were super wealthy families who kept secret technology to themselves. They would have tested iron from meteorites, realized that it was rock hard, much better than bronze, much better than copper, and they kept this scientific knowledge utterly secret. Now, for those of you who don't believe that granite can be melted, this is an interesting clip that shows a granite ball being literally, before your very eyes, converted into a glob of gooey kind of obsidian. Obsidian is rock glass. It's rock that's been heated by lava inside the Earth's crust, and it was very much um, very coveted and it was searched for by the Aztecs and the Mayans. And granite, when you use one of these high-powered gas torches, which is what you're seeing now, granite can easily be turned into a kind of gloopy kind of obsidian glass. Now what you're seeing is rose quartz granite. This comes from Aswan in Egypt. It has a natural kind of rosy pink color. The main components are feldspar, mica, and quartz, but 0.04% of rose quartz granite is actually uranium, which bursts into flame on contact with air molecules. And you can see that when it's been heated, there is a discoloration. You get these light colors and you get some darker spots. Now this piece here of granite, it's on the Giza Plateau. It's on the eastern side of the Great Pyramid. And you can see that there is a, a very complicated curvature in this cut. Now, this was all researched for the very first time by a British engineer from Manchester called Christopher Dunn, who's written two really great best-selling books about the high precision of technology that was being used in ancient Egypt. Sir William Flinders Petrie was an Egyptologist and his assistant was Margaret Murray. Yes, the same Margaret Murray who wrote the book God of the Witches. And in London there is an entire museum that is curated by the University of London dedicated to looking after various artefacts which Sir William Flinders Petrie brought back from Egypt. And there we see in London granite cores. These are the uh, remnants of cores that have been drilled directly into quartz granite. Now in Christopher Dunn's most recent book, Christopher Dunn clearly says that some heat source was used to soften the granite on each turn of the coring drill. And that's very important research. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a natural source of heat, which the ancient Egyptians had abundant amounts of. Noticias, documentales y películas. Enigmatv.com, el canal en